Who's in charge? Senators raise concern about who is heading the JCF after Quelo turned up for work. Good evening and welcome to Primetime News on air and online at OneSpotMedia.com. I'm Archibald Gordon. And I'm Doreen Samuels. Also this evening, give me the job. SSP Steve McGregor after the top cop post. Outline your agenda. Former Prime Minister advises government ahead of meeting with U.S. Secretary of State. Not chosen. Ruling JLP tells former MP son he will not inherit his father's vacant seat. And in business news, looking good. Fitch ratings affirm Jamaica's credit rating. There's also sports, sports commentary and weather in this newscast. But for the break the feedback question this thing we're asking who would you suggest should be the new commission of police and why share comments online facebook.com slash television jamaica and tweet at television jam stay with us the news in detail after the break Welcome back to Primetime News. A special welcome to the folks watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can watch TVJ live by downloading our OneSpot Media app in the Google Play Store or the App Store. That's the number one, followed by the words Spot and Media. Up first this evening, there were hints of confusion at the Office of the Police Commission on Thursday after it appeared George Quelo turned up for work a day after he was supposed to have demitted office. Mr. Quelo, who it is believed was pressured into leaving the job, went to the office as he usually did raising speculation that he was not ready to hand over the deputy commissioner hand over to deputy commissioner of police Clifford Blake who took up responsibility as acting commissioner of police the situation is being downplayed by the police high command which has rejected reports that two commissioners showed up for work today TVJ's Anthony Lug tells us more is he in or is he out it's a question many had been asking as speculation surfaced Thursday that Commissioner George Quelo showed up for work despite indications he was to depart. The issue was a major discussion among opposition senators in the upper house. The confusion this morning of two commissioners turning up at office. Commissioner Quelo turning up and saying, I don't get no letter. And Commissioner Blair acting. That's the type of confusion we're getting from this government. Who is the commissioner of police? Can't have two at any one time. That ushers in chaos. Clarification was sought from the Police Service Commission but we were referred to the Corporate Communications Unit, CCU of the JCF, which confirmed that Mr. Quelo showed up at the Commissioner's office on Old Hope Road in St. Andrew on Thursday, but not to work. The CCU said Mr. Quelo was there to formally hand over to Deputy Commissioner of Police Clifford Blake. We tried to contact the Acting Commissioner, but several calls to his phone went unanswered. However, speaking on Tuesday's Balancing Justice on RJR 94FM, DCP Blake disclosed that among his interim plans is to boost the numbers in the JCF. The first batch of new policemen and women are scheduled to begin training in March. A former head of the Area 4 Police Division, DCP Blake is one of two remaining Deputy Commissioners of Police in the JCF. And while it's early days yet, several persons from his hometown in St. Elizabeth believe he should be given the opportunity to head the JCF beyond an interim period. He's a man of honesty, integrity and trust, someone who I've known over the years and displayed low qualities. He has the potential and ability to solve crime in Jamaica with the help of the people. Mr. Blake, although he's young, but I'd like you to take that position and see if we can get things going. Anthony Log, TVJ News. A look back now on former Commissioner Quelo's stint in office. TVJ's Janella Pursuits reports. That's right, Quelo will go down in history as the shortest serving Commissioner of Police. The most recent set of commissioners before him, Dr. Carl Williams, Owen Ellington, Rear Admiral Hardly Lewin, Lucius Thomas, Francis Forbes, and Colonel Trevor McMillan, served the Jamaica Constabulary Force for three, four, two, two, nine, and three years, respectively. Commissioner Quelo, who has been a member of the JCF for 41 years, headed the Constabulary for only nine months. We were there on his first day in office on April 18, 2017. Ready or not, I'm here already. I've taken on the challenge. And um, for those persons who know me, once I give a commitment, I go straight ahead. So I'm fully committed to the task, and that is what the people of Jamaica will expect. We'll get 
a committed commission of police this task. His swearing-in would follow a week and a half later. I, George Fitzroy Quello, stand before you with God in my heart as your chief constable, your 29th commissioner of police. There was also support from Parliament. I am confident that Mr. Quello will continue to strengthen the work undertaken by the JCF and will manage the force in such a way that will ultimately lead to the enhancing of the security services, improving public order, accountability, and reducing corruption. Whenever there was, you know, um, flare-ups in, in the tough area four, which he was the commander for a number of years, he would always be found on the ground, um, day and night, ensure, reassuring the citizens, um, motivating the JCF personnel, and I, I believe he will do well once he gets the support. But by the end of his first month in office, murders continued to skyrocket. Many suggested that the honeymoon period was over and the new commissioner was being called upon to take action. His first press conference was on June 13, 2017. Increased patrol presence in crime hotspots. We are committing, committing to permanent presence in some very volatile communities to protect citizens while we work to flush out criminal elements. There is very little new in law enforcement. What is different is how it will be applied and the energies that we bring to it. We have a workforce that is far more motivated and so we are committed to the task and I'm convinced that there will be a difference in the very near future. But the bloodletting continued. Commissioner Quelo coming under more pressure. Is it that you're out of depth? S absolutely not. Um, but when you approach your job every day as if you're going for the, the uh, like this is the first day, it means you're all fired up. You're ready to go. I am confident too that m the, generally men and women of the JCF are decent, committed persons and they want to see Jamaica um, on the right path. But we are also cognizant that we can't do it alone. By the end of 2017, murders were at a five-year high. The new year began with rumors that the Minister of National Security, Robert Montague, wanted the JCF head to step aside, a claim which the minister repeatedly denied. Then the announcement last week. Coelho resigns. He insisted that he was not forced out. The 29th Commissioner of Police calling it quits seven months before his retirement in August. Who will be the 30th? DCP Clifford Blake will hold the fort until the announcement is made. Janela Precious, TVJ News. Meanwhile, Head of the Community Safety and Security Brand, Senior Superintendent of Police Steve McGregor, has thrown his hat into the ring for the JCF's top post. He made the declaration on Wednesday afternoon while addressing some students from St. James High School. I am a prime candidate for the immediate succession plan. And I am going to be here. And Steve McGregor is going to continue to impact what is happening in our country. Because I am one who is stepping up as a leader, because we need more leaders to lead our country. SSP McGregor's um, announcement comes days after retired Senior Superintendent Renato Adams announced that he would be willing to take on the position of Police Commissioner. An opposition senator is insisting that Andrew Holness, that government should accept full responsibility for the spiraling murder rate in the country. The call came from Senator Lambert Brown during the debate on the resolution to extend the state of emergency. Despite his comments, the senator agreed to extend the state of emergency in St. James to May 2. TVJ's Andrea Chisholm reports. This government, Mr. President, must take full responsibility for the crime situation and their failure to act and to act firmly. Opposition Senator Lambert Brown at Thursday's sitting of the Upper House, a strikingly different tone from his colleagues in the Lower House on Tuesday as they voted to extend the state of a public emergency in St. James. But for him, he came to talk truth to power. Where is the crime plan? I asked it last year. I ask it again. When you have a state of emergency in a parish 
and gunmen shoot up a funeral in the bounds of that state of emergency. That's contempt for the state of emergency. Though he supported the extension, Senator Brown said the government had early warning signs last year, long before the murder toll passed 1,600. He also criticized the government for not absorbing the lawyer fee for police personnel who have to face the Independent Commission of Investigations. We also propose that they should establish an anti-gang court to move swiftly with those who they caught, thankfully, to the previous administration. We were bold enough. Do you want my vote? Allow me to speak. Yeah, yeah. But if you want my vote, allow me to speak. Because if I'm going to be run out of the Senate, I won't be able to vote. Most unfortunate contribution from my colleague senator previously and i think the utterance about suggesting that you don't get my vote yet is is most despicable that issue aside opposition senator floyd morris called for an improvement in the social conditions of jamaicans to help solve crime and for kd night the state of a public emergency is a critical turning point for the country don't squander it. We might have to wait a long time for it to happen again. Government Senator Pernell Charles Jr. pointed to early successes. For example, the seizure of 12 guns, wanted men being captured, and persons being arrested and charged. Notwithstanding this, Government Senator Carencia Morrison blasted Jamaicans for putting up with criminals, some of which are young boys who are funded through lottery scamming and other crimes. When they were shelling down the clubs and the parties, when they were burning thousands of dollars, spending a fortune on money pull up, wash care with champagne, didn't we see this coming? When these boys were buying out car marts, week after week they could hardly supply the demand. Weren't we alarmed? Mr. President, St. James was a problem that was waiting to happen. And we should have trampled it from the get-go. Mr. President, what is happening now must never happen again anywhere in Jamaica. Andrea Chisholm, TVJ News. In the meantime, National Security Minister Robert Montague says 50 spaces have been provided at the Horizon Adult Remand Center in St. Andrew to accommodate detainees held under the state of public emergency in St. James. Mr. Montague says in another three weeks, another 200 spaces will become available at the Tamarind Farm facility in St. Catherine. His disclosure comes amidst recent concerns about facilities to accommodate detainees at police lockups in St. James. The National Security minister says in keeping with internationally accepted standards and basic human rights, offenders will be treated with dignity. A top story this evening. Senators raise concern about who is in charge of the police force after George Quaido turned up for work today. But the JCF says it was just to facilitate a smooth handover. Still ahead, police confirm child porn video circulating on social media, not from Jamaica. And in business news, looking good, Fitch Ratings affirms Jamaica's credit rating and said the outlook is positive. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Continuing the news. With U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson set to visit Jamaica next week, former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson is urging the government to push its own policy agenda during the discussions. More in this report from TVJ's Earl Moxham. The U.S. State Department, in announcing the visit to Jamaica and other countries in the hemisphere last week, said Secretary Tillerson would seek to promote security issues, economic prosperity, energy security, and democracy. But Mr. Patterson wants Jamaica to pursue its own national interests in those discussions. We cannot win the war against crime and violence or the fight against illegal narcotics and money laundering unless those who manufacture the weapons of destruction prohibit and enforce the curbs 
for the export of guns and bullets to our shores. <laughs> Secondly, at this time, when some deny the reality of climate change, we must leave no doubt that our efforts to achieve stated and desirable targets for prosperity will be severely impeded and derailed by the devastating effects of climate change and global warming. And the former Prime Minister is still seething following Donald Trump's recent statement on Haiti and African states. And we must make it clear that aberration of our brothers and sisters in Haiti and the African continent is offensive and repulsive. We renounce any form of rhetoric which is divisive or racist. We must be unapologetic in the assertion of respect for our dignity as human beings. Mr. Patterson was giving the main address at the launch of a book by Dr. Richard Bernal, Jamaica's former ambassador to the United States at the regional headquarters of the University of the West Indies. That book explores the influence of small states on superpowers, focusing particularly on Jamaica's relationship with the United States. Earl Moxham, TBJ News. And Mr. Patterson took the Andrew Holness administration to task on Wednesday night for his failure to vote last month to condemn the U.S. government for its decision to relocate its embassy in Israel to the city of Jerusalem. Jamaica abstained in the December 22 vote, over which the Trump administration had threatened to punish those nations which sided against it in the U.N. resolution. According to Mr. Patterson, that is a betrayal of the country's proud history of standing up for sound principles in the international community. The Jamaican people deserve some explanation from their government and are entitled to ask why. Certainly, it cannot be as former Prime Minister Bruce Golding has rightly inquired that Jamaica coward because of the veiled threat to reduce U.S. aid. It wouldn't have happened under my watch. I dare to say it wouldn't have happened under his. Several other Caribbean states voted to condemn the American action, even after President Donald Trump threatened punitive action against those which did so. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is in the line of fire this evening for comments made at the swearing-in of Brian Sykes as Acting Chief Justice of Jamaica this morning. Stakeholders say his comments suggest the Acting Chief Justice is on probation and it's not going down well. They argue that the Prime Minister's comments appear to go against the constitutional provision of separation of powers. TVJ's Andrea Chisholm reports. I, Brian Patrick St. George Sykes, do swear that I will be faithful and be a true allegiance to Jamaica. Acting Chief Justice Brian Sykes taking the oath of office at King's House on Thursday, minutes after this response from the Prime Minister. I'm confident that Justice Sykes will act in the role of Chief Justice and very soon will fully assume the role of Chief Justice. But as I said earlier, and I close on the point, actions that brings results that brings results will determine the assumption of the rule. President of the Jamaica Bar Association, Jacqueline Cummings, said the comment suggests the appointment was temporary and the acting chief justice was on probation. 
made us wonder as to what exactly are you saying? Are you lacking in confidence in the choice of your Chief Justice? Is it that you are still uncertain as to your choice? So what should be done now? The bench and the bar support Justice Sykes. Justice Sykes, without the start of the resources, can continue the work done by Mrs. McCullough. And the work can begin from today. All that needs to happen is that the government of Jamaica, having seen the reception that Justice Sykes has gotten from the bench and the bar, and the judicial arm of government, confirm the appointment and let us get on with the people's work. In his response, Acting Chief Justice Brian Sykes underscored the importance of separation of powers and having an independent judiciary. But while we share the same goal, our roles and functions are different. We do not obstruct each other. Policy is exclusively a matter for the cabinet. The Constitution tells us that. The judges have no views about policy. What we do is to express the legal outcome of a particular dispute. He said it was also important for judges to focus on facts, evidence, submissions, the constitution and the law when making decisions. And the Prime Minister urged the acting Chief Justice to increase the efficiency of the courts. I believe that is now the loud clamor of the public. The public wants to see an efficient and timely justice system. Mr. Sykes said the use of technology, time for judges to work on judgments, and the timely production of transcripts will speed up the process. I know that there is this thinking now to introduce the digital recording of proceedings, but we also have to flesh it out in terms of storage, who will have access what is going to be the official record of the court, and that kind of thing. Andrea Chisholm, TVJ News. To our primetime news update now, the police have confirmed that the video circulating on social media showing a little girl involved in a sexual act was recorded in Trinidad and Tobago. An investigation was launched by the local police and the Office of the Children's Advocate to determine the origin of the video. We are able at this time to confirm that the video with the, the child pornography that has been circulating on social media did not originate in Jamaica. We have confirmed with our law enforcement partners in Trinidad that a formal report was made to the Trinidad police and that matter is now being investigated by them. It is also said that the man who is in the video is on the run. The police are again asking persons to desist from sharing the video as doing so is an offense. The public is being urged to delete it if they receive it. To another follow-up now, TVJ News has learned that the Jamaica Labour Party has made it clear to Dwayne Smith that he will not be the candidate in the upcoming by-election in St. Andrew Northwestern to fill the vacancy created by the retirement of his father, Derek Smith. Dwayne is a councillor for the Chancery Hall Division in the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation. He told TVJ News that he has been informed by the party that Dr. Nigel Clark will be its candidate. Derek Smith resigned last month after representing the constituency for 29 years. Five men are now in police custody as the St. Elizabeth Police intensifies strategies to maintain law and order in the parish. It's believed that the men were found with several bottles of oil suspected to be used in witchcraft. The parish has been under intense police security since the state of emergency was issued for St. James. TVJ's Kalisha Williams reports. Members of the security forces have been strategically increasing their presence in St. Elizabeth since the state of emergency was imposed in St. James last month. The latest operation in the town of Santa Cruz on Thursday targeted illegal motor vehicle operators. What we have is a new initiative where the St. Elizabeth Chapter Department in collaboration with the Manchester Chapter Department we have a thing going where we have joint operation uh, where we look for vehicles with defects and, and road traffic violators. Um, this morning so far we have started at Totas and we started with Manchester Central Police and also three examiners from both parishes. 
At least 35 license plates have been removed from defective vehicles. Over 100 tickets issued and three vehicles seized. Five men said to be from a Westmoreland address were taken into custody. It is believed that the men were found with several bottles of oil suspected to be used for witchcraft. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. Back in the news again are the people from Chapleton and Clarendon complaining about the poor state of the road in the area. Today, scores of taxi drivers and bus operators withdrew their services, resulting in a massive traffic pileup along the Chapleton main road. TVJ's Kalisha Williams reports. Commuters suffered major disruptions in Chapleton on Thursday, some going by foot as taxi and bus operators withdrew their services. It's the second protest in 24 hours over the poor state of the road in the area. In solidarity with the taxi men and the commuters, the commuters who fly this road from Napier to Chapleton and beyond, because the road is in a deplorable condition and we can't work in this environment. Although the National Works Agency had made commitment to address the road situation in Chapleton, motorists are still not convinced. Mr. Michael, please, you have a good enough road. But to all them deep up, sir. Yeah, man, respect, man. And I'm bad enough. We are begging you diligently. Please, sir. We are so far for road, man. And we know we're not indignant. Come fix it, man. We just get loquacious, loquacious, more power, loquaciousness. We're tired for beg for road, man. Cars are all up money. Front end parts. Front end parts. Shacks. One control and fear. One control and fear. 25,000 now. Guy come with ball giant and everything. Even as the people are frustrated about the poor state of the road, they pointed to a bigger issue on the horizon, criminals lurking around the area. Them fling stone, them overtake you, them pull up in front, one there front, one there back. Bump in your back. Them I tell you about a light drop out of back when you drive off and left them, no light no drop out. We need the road and we need it now. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. Time now for the responses from our friends on Facebook and Twitter. And Archie is at the Smart Board. Thanks, Lorraine. Here's a question this evening. We're asking, who would you suggest should be the new commission of police and why? First comment is from Javorni Elvi, who says, serving in the ranks of the FBI, working all over the world, retired um, Wilfred Rattigan, who was once featured on Ian Boyne's profile, was my pick for commissioner. Being that he applied for the job, his application was not looked at, both times while both political parties held power, he's not in his 70s like the normal commissioners who lack vision, vim, vigor and vitality. Um, Eddie Francis says, to be honest, I don't know. What I do know is that someone who comes in with this soft approach will also fail. Even if Mr. Adams hanging need to resume, reduce sentencing um, for serious crimes like murder needs to stop, I would also have stricter laws in uh, in a state of emergency. For example, anyone caught with a gun or found guilty of murder will face the death penalty, even that. Alicia Chisholm says, I um, think they should give Adams a chance to see what he's capable, capable of doing because his old tactics might just be what's needed to put crime under control, but he alone cannot do it. And Samantha Fletcher says, Adams, because when it comes to criminals, he will kill them all and done. Keep your comments coming on Facebook and Twitter, facebook.com slash television Jamaica, and it tweets to at television jam. Business news and news from overseas after the break.